There's a doom cursing this nature right now. Cursing. And then they inside it, whether they realize it or not, do they CP5013 with the devil and allegiance with him and kissing and licking the boots of the Antichrist. And some of these same ones are the ones that criticize me. <laughs> Thus saith the word of the Lord, woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity and lying divinations, saying the Lord. He's calling them witches and warlocks. Got a lot of that going on today in the day's pulpit. A lot of witches and warlocks. New Age Babels. Worshiping, worshiping literally the devil behind the scenes. Joined to the occult literally. But having a religious facade behind the pulpit. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle of the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saith the Lord. The Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. A false word, false prophecy, false visions. The word soothsaying comes from that witchcraft. They say good things that make you feel good all the time. That's what a lot of these sorcerers are. They are scared of offending anyone. The word of God is offensive just in nature. <laughs> if your feathers don't get ruffled on occasion... You aren't, you aren't teaching them, thus saith the word of the Lord. My job ain't to make you feel good. My job is to be an under-shepherd and whack you, if I have to, with the staff of the word to get you into eternity and pull you with, this, with that staff in the right direction as an under-shepherd supposed to do. I'm not here to make you feel good. If you feel good, great. But that ain't my role. To say soothsaying words to you. Well, I'm not a soothsayer. I proclaim, thus saith the word of the Lord. That's what street priest is about. You won't get nothing but the truth of God's word from this ministry. So help me God. And he will. And he does. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle of the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity, they have seen lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm their word. Have ye not seen in vain visions, and have not spoken a lying divination, whereas ye say, The Lord saith, albeit I have not spoken? God gets pissed about those coming in his name trying to one-up one, one, one another with these visions and prophecies. And God said, I didn't tell them that. So if you didn't get it from God's heaven, where'd you get it from? It's only in one other source. That's why he said it's divination, lying divination of death. Hey, the devil can appear as an angel of light. He was in heaven. He knows how things, he knows the inner working mechanisms of heaven and how to lie and deceive. That's why he's called a deceiver. And he's deceiving many. He operates best in church than any place, better than a bar. Gets more sinners, and gets more people in the hell part about via the church than he does in the bars of America. Guarantee you that. At a nightclub. Through these lying false prophets. Just think, if you can capture, think if you got a, a, a false prophet in a church that got a stadium field with people, a whole stadium. How many thousands of souls sitting up in that stadium following this this false prophet, this new age Baal? How many souls in the hell can you get in one strike? A lot. 
So that's why he goes for the kingpins of these churches. Preaching this new age theology, this humanism. Looking out for time, turned it back on eternity, looking out to get over in his life. Not giving God the glory, they getting the glory. Up there strutting with the capes on, sweating, sparks flying out the air. All for the praise of men. Not the glory of God. That's what, these, that's what he's talking about here. They have not seen, they have seen a vain vision and have not spoken a lying divination where, and have spoken a lying divination, divination. Whereas ye say, the Lord saith, albeit I have not spoken. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore behold I am against you, saith the Lord God. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets, that see vanity and that divine lies they shall not be in the assembly of my people neither shall they be written in the writings of the house of Israel neither shall they enter into the land of Israel and ye shall know that I am the Lord God because even because when they have seduced my people saying peace and there was no peace and one built up a wall, and lo, others dubbed it with untempered mortar. A house built on lies, on carnality, on falsehood. It's a lot of false houses of worship built on there today. Say unto them which dub it with untempered mortar, that it shall, that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye of great hailstones shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. God said, I'm going to tear it down. Lo, when the wall is fallen, shall it be said unto you, Where is the dubbing wherewith ye have dubbed it? Therefore thus saith the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury, and there shall be an overflowing shower in mine anger and great hailstones in my fury to consume it so will I break down the wall that ye have dug with untempered mortar and bring it down to the ground so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered and it shall fall and ye shall be consumed in the, in the middle of it all and ye shall know that I am the Lord thus when I accomplish my wrath upon the wall And I'm going to skip down to here. Go down to verse 20, chapter Ezekiel 13, 20. Wherefore thus saith the Lord God, be, be, Behold, I am against you, pillows, which ye have, which ye have hunted souls to make them fly. And I will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go. Even the pillows, or even the souls, that ye hunt to make them fly. Your handkerchiefs also will I tear, and deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall no more in your hand to be hunted, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad. It's doom and gloom. That's what Brother Jay been talking about. These doom and gloom prophets. That, that prophesy lies that keep people in a state of fear and gloom and doom or a state of falsehood of well being with goody goody this and goody goody that you got two extremes going at the same time in the church you had the soothsayers They say, do anything you want. Do as thou wilt. And God will still bless you. 
and he's here as a genie in a bottle to cater to your needs. You got that bunch, and you got the gloom and dooms. It's, it's a perpetual state of fear and condemnation, like the Pharisees in, in Christ's day. Because with lies, ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad. Doom and gloom. And strengthen the hands of the wicked. You straighten Satan. When you do that, that's what he's about. The spirit of depression. Spirit of gloom. You got that bunch of then you got the pendulum swinging the other way. No balance. I have not made, you made them sad and I haven't made them sad, God said. And strengthen the hands of the wicked that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Instead of showing him metanoia, brainwashing himself with God's word and coming out of that state. Therefore ye shall see no more vanity nor divine divination, witchcraft, sorcery. That's what's in a lot of these churches. And they don't even realize it. They don't realize they're under voodoo spell sometimes. A lot of these churches with the shaman preacher. Therefore, you shall no more see vanity nor divine div divinations. For I will deliver my people out of your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. It's going to set them free from the soothsayer. And this is awakening going on now. And God's pulling away from these false churches and taking his people elsewhere. And you're having a lot of ministries that are springing up grass um, grassroots ministries but street priests is one I'm one of them brother Jay left, left the divorce that bunch years ago and I'm out here on the corner in cyberspace all to myself it's just God and I we ride along like Paul Revere God and I like Paul Revere right the devil is coming. The devil is coming. You know? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But that's what our, that's what we've done. And you got a lot of others that are doing it. In the Bible, you had to go outside the camp to find God. And he wasn't found in the camp. The camp was outside. God always could use outsiders in his book. His word is full of Non-traditional. In my case, I was trained in and around the traditional, the God used me as a spy, but I was so turned off to it, God knew I'd be a great tool for him because I hated it. <laughs> I was oppressed, I was tortured. And I've been, the heat of the sun sets free, it's free indeed. I've been set free in Christ years ago from this bunch that tortured me. After my conversion to the trip back from hell, I had to grab on to something, like I said, grab on to the log till the lifeboat comes and save you did what I had to do, but there was I didn't know I was training <laughs> just for this mission. Now, we're going to go to uh, Ezekiel 37, and this is where we're going to finish off. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me and carried me in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many. So just picture this big valley, scorched earth, with these bleached skeletons, bones, scattered all over the place. Skull over here, uh, form over here. This is getting off the issue a little bit, but not much. I remember one time, you know, I used to take my uh, kids hiking with me when I used to hike up in the mountains. All the time, I even I love the mountains. I, I miss those days, you know, living here in Nevada. But back in those days, I, I used to go back up in the mountains. I'd take my kids, and um, one time I had my son with me, and I I discovered a, a femur, um, male bone. I knew exactly what it was, and it was been out there for a while, bleached. But you know, I called the authorities and everything. And, my son thought it was <laughs> he, thought, he thought it was a, a wishbone from a turkey or something. So he, 
I said, no, I mean, he thought it was a bone from a turkey. I said, no, sir, this is a human bone. But anyway, yeah, they, they confirmed it and all that and brought a crew in and taped off the area. It was, it was back up in the mountains. But the point I'm making, I can picture a whole valley full of bones. Just, just these bleach bones. You know, I gotta have very good imagination, <laughs> so I can see them out there in the middle of nowhere, in this beach, bleach parched earth with all these skeletons and bones scattered everywhere. And he caused me to pass by them roundabout, so he had to circle this whole valley full of bones. Obviously, probably dead soldiers that were, you know, fought, fought there. And their remains. Remains of dead soldiers, but behold, there were many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, and he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered and, and said, O Lord, thou knowest. <laughs> That's a safe answer. John did the same thing in Revelation with the angel asked him, or oh, I think it was the angel or the elder, one of, one of the elders. Ask him a question. He says, Sir, thou knowest. It's pretty safe. You know. Well, he is God. He can do anything. But even this looks like a little bit, little bit hard work for you, God, to make this live again. <laughs> but he didn't want to go the other way and say, No, no, you can't. You know, talking to God. Man. But God, all things are possible. Jehovah Peter. God, the God of impossibility. And he answered and said, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. <laughs> I told you, God, yeah, this man, there's some far out there. I can see Brother Jay standing there. I always put myself in the place of these prophets. <laughs> put myself in their skins. See me in this valley with all these bones, skulls, and skeletons. And I, just me and God out here. And I'm preaching. I'm preaching to some bones. I mean, it's bad enough. I'm telling you, it's hard for me. Because, you know, I don't know how many people follow, listening. I'm just looking into a black hole of a camera. So that's cutting me. That's pretty close. <laughs> Sometimes I feel all alone out there. Is anybody out there? Is anybody out there? <laughs> but I can imagine my brother Zeke fell on this valley <laughs> preaching to God, I God, that's his people. That I feel this way with a camera. But I can imagine how he feels. Out there, <laughs> sorry, it's my wacky says him. Again, he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones and send to them, O ye bones. <laughs> put flesh and blood on this. That's the problem with most people. They just read about these characters, but they don't put flesh and blood. I put flesh and blood on these guys. He's standing out in the middle of nowhere preaching to some bleach bones. Yeah, I'm like, That's his congregation. That's his congregation. A bunch of Dry bones and skeletons. And Again, he said unto me, Prophesy to these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> oh, the things God puts his, pro his prophets through. Thus said the Lord to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinew up on you, tender up on you, cartilage and tenure, and will bring flesh up on you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. Hear that bones? You're going to rise again. So we got the title for And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. That's what we do. No matter how far out it seems with God. Yes, sir, God. Yes, sir. <laughs> we follow orders. No matter how ridiculous it looks to the world. I mean, you could imagine. Now, imagine if uh, the news media could have got a hold of a man of God out of the middle of nowhere preaching to a congregation of dead bones. He say he's crazy. He's mad. He should be locked up. They say that about us anyway. But the boy, <laughs> Oh, they think we're crazy just for believing in God, period. So I prophesied, it was commanded, and prophesied, and there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. <laughs> I think, Brother Jay, what time did the exit stage? God would have had to grab me from his throne. <laughs> Come back here, Jay. <laughs> Where you going? Uh, 
And there was a noise, and there was shaking, and the bones came together, bone to this bone. And when I be here, now these bones are flying. You, you got to picture this. You got to have a good imagination for it. These bones are whirling. Uh, an arm that belonged to Joe over here when he died, that bone is flying and connecting with Joe. And, and, uh, well, Robert, what is that? Robert's bones over here, and Lance and his bones. Everybody's connected to to their own body parts. So bones are being hurled, flying from. They don't tell a uh, wild animal or beast might have drug a bone on the other side of the valley. So these bones are whirling and twirling and going back and forth. Don't forget the vultures had to eat. So they don't tell them these bones are just or, or, or spread out, dispersed all over the valley. So these birds are whirling and twirling and connecting and clickety clacking and, and they're coming together. <laughs> Put some flesh and blood on it. It's like a nightmare. This is uh, like what horror movies are made of. I prophesied as I was commanded. And, and when I beheld, lo, the sea news. Oh, I prophesied as I was commanded, and there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to this bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up on them. Now you got an army standing. Now they look like mannequins standing there. They ain't breathing, but they all come together. And the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. So they look like mannequins, like I said, just standing there. But their army has been resurrected. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. The wind represents normally the Holy Spirit, the breath of the Rosh, the spirit of life. Then there he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, <laughs> and say to the wind. Now he's talking to the wind. Thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon the slain that they may live. Now he's talking to the wind. Went from bones to the wind. So I prophesied as I was commanded, yes, sir, God. And the breath came unto them, and they lived and stood upon their feet. Exceedingly great army. Now I'm going to stop there. That's it. With God, all things are possible. Now God, he rolls up a, a pile of bones that seemed hopeless. That seemed beyond any life ever returning to him. That's the God we serve. That's why I told him, is these bones shall rise again. I don't know what situation you're in that seems like it's impossible that you are, or what hurdles you're trying to overcome. But I told him this for a reason. We serve a God. All things are possible. And same with this nation. God is in the process. This nation seemed hopeless, steeped, in darkness. Dark forces that be seem to have a grip on this nation. But God is bringing us out of that dark, this darkness. And he's judging this corrupt system. And it looked like something that's impossible to happen. And he delivered an equivalent of, of David to lead us as president. With God, all things are possible. God could do this with, in Ezekiel. He could do this with this nation the blessed United States of America. And that's what he's doing. He's restoring this nation. And you need to get involved and get active. Seeing that God is doing his work and do your part. And I've said it over and over. Get involved. If you're called professing Christianity to act, be one. Don't talk to talk, walk to walk. Get active. Get involved in politics. Get involved in every area where the devil has taken over. And fill that void. These bones has risen. This nation has risen again. And the devil want to, with his ages, is working just as fast over time to kill it back off. But if God be for us, who could be against us? So claim that and move in faith. These bones shall rise again. That includes your individual lives and your circumstances. Whatever you face. And I don't care if it's stage five cancer. These bones shall rise again. Tell the doctor. Book a cruise for next year. Say, I will 
be you healed and restored in Jesus' mighty name. I don't care what it is. Financial, bones, bleach bones that you're facing, a valley of bleach bones financially or health-wise, whatever your bleach bone situation. It could be family, anything. It could be drug problem, sex problem, anything. Whatever seems helpless, where there's no help, you can be restored just like we see in Ezekiel, God's prophet, speaking God's word. We have way more pro promises for restoration than Ezekiel prophesied. So get into God's word and the faith and trust God and believe his word over your circumstance. That's what faith is. And claim his promises. Whatever. For provision, healing. Find a promise and cling on to it. And bring God's word down in the time. Or if you die in that circumstance, you're in heaven anyway. So, we're more than conquerors. Can't lose in Christ Jesus. Alright. And, and uh, definitely don't rob God. Bring your tithes, first fruits. Alabaster box, if I'm the one that taught you, Galatians 6 says, yo, that includes you uh, thieving, robbing pastors. That's uh, plagiarizing these messages. You old too, if you're being taught by Brother Jack. Break it to streetpriestministry.org and give. All right. God bless you. Good day, good evening, good night to you. Around the world, may you grow in faith in Jesus' name.